Okay, here we go. Time to get going. All right, welcome. It's good to be here on this Sunday. I thought uh, Friday morning, I thought we were in for a really steamy day, and it turned out to be not too bad. So I'm glad the humidity has decided to let up just a little bit. So, well, we've got communion today and fellowship meal today. So if you're watching online and want to share communion with us, you need to get a little bite of something and a little sip of something so that you can... Uh, participate with us at the end of the service. So, wow, that's good. Glad to be here today. So a couple of announcements. So uh, kids, we're going to start up the uh, the youth choir here pretty quick here in the next couple of weeks. So we'll be getting a hold of you guys and Make sure that's something we all want to do. So we still have uh, prayer and worship tonight. And then Wednesday we'll have Bible study and worship. Been having a good time doing that. And uh, just seeing where the Lord teaches us and the Lord leads us. So uh, our visitors, you're welcome to stay for lunch with us today. Um, After we get done, we'll have uh, lunch downstairs together. Welcome to come. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you that you have made a way for us to come into your presence. Lord, we who come from so many different backgrounds, so many different cultures even, Lord, you have invited us to come and have relationship with you, and we thank you. Lord, would you be with the other churches in our area, Lord, that preach the gospel. Lord, that the word goes out and be strong and touch the hearts and minds of the listeners. Lord, for our brothers and sisters around the world that suffer for your name, pray you give them courage. Help them as they go through their days. Lord, go with us today. Be near us. Let your presence come even as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So we're going to begin, we've got kind of a full morning, so we're just going to do a couple songs as we get going and you know, there's an old hymn that's really been uh, ministering to me personally and it's called Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And it, it really talks, the writer talks about how through all these things that they go through in life, all the struggles we go through in life, we can lean on Jesus. We can lean on him and he gives us strength as we go through. And so that's really what this song is about. And so maybe you're going through struggles this morning. Maybe you got struggles in your life. Just listen to the words of this song and as we sing it together and Um, Make it a prayer for yourself. Yes, 
you because you are God. Lord, if you did nothing for us, you are worthy of our praise. Yet you love us and have done so much and you still do so much, Lord. We thank you. We praise you, Lord, for being the God who is who you say you are. And you do what you say you will do. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Isn't God good? Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Well, we're going to take a minute. Uh, we've got our penny march today. And so if you've brought... 
uh, change for the kids for um, Pat, anybody? I've got a, a bag here. Why don't you take this? So that if you have uh, coins for the kids that to put in their uh, missions banks, you can uh, raise it, raise them up, and the kids will come get them. Yeah. Go watch the hands. There's hands back there. Go get them. It's heavy. So I apologize to those of you watching online, but we don't put our kids on camera, so I'm kind of standing here in front. So I've tried to tell you people online that it's better in person. Oh, here you go. Go ahead. There's more back there. There's more back there. So the money that we raise, every penny of it goes to um, Open Bible Missions Missionary Care Fund. And so we don't keep any of this here. There is no handling fee. I remember a, a couple years ago, more than that probably, the all of our offerings were being processed through the region, and they would take all the coins to the bank, and the bank wanted 20% of all the coins that they had to process, and we uh, made a little stink, and they changed their policy for us, so... Come on. Yeah. All right. Is any more out there? We're just getting it all put in here. We're all good. All right, guys. Put them all in there. Thanks, Tina. You can move, Tina, you can move them all along there. All right. So right now, uh, the guys and the girls, they're tied at about 50 bucks a piece. So it's coming. It's coming. Come on, dump them in there. Dump them in. Okay. That's good. Just put the hat on. That's fine. All right. Thanks, girls. Thanks for all your big help. All right. Whew. You know, I know we take time to do this, and sometimes... You know, we kind of go, ah, oh, come on, guys, hurry up, you know. But uh, this is valuable for our kids to learn, you know, to give. And it's important. It's an important lesson for all of us. All right. So we got just a little bit of review from last week. Last week, our message was, you know, it's difficult for me to, to present last week because it wasn't an easy message. You know, sometimes the Lord says to us, you got to get up. Sometimes we're depressed or discouraged or 
um, whatever. We see this happen a lot of times in Scripture, and God just continually, you know, even though He's compassionate with us, and He's merciful with us, and He urges us, but sometimes He has to kick us in the seat and just say, I've given you all you need. You need to get up. And so we saw this last, last week, that God has given us what we need to live as He wants us to live. We can't do it on our own, but he gives us the tools. And if we take time to draw near to him and learn what he's called us to, he's given us all we need to do. And this is really where we ended last week. So we need to learn and we need to grow up in Christ. You know, there are things that we don't take part in because we don't know. You know, where we're going to go today in our message, um, we're going to learn about King Asa of of uh, Judah. And at the end of his life, and this isn't really part of the sermon, but at the end of his life, we see that he went away from living a life of faith. Even though he still loved God, he went away. Hey, kids back there. If that's not going to work, they need to move, okay? Yep, that's not acceptable, girls. Okay. Figure that out, right? Okay. So Asa, at the end of his life, you can all turn around here. We've all done this before. We all know that kids do things, so we're good. So at the end of Asa's life, here he had lived a life of faith in his early life. And at the end of his life, he didn't. And he got sick in his feet. And the Bible says, the Bible says that he consulted the physicians only and didn't consult God. And then the next line says, so he died. God wants us to go with everything to him. He's given us tools and promises. But if we don't use the tools and promises he's given us, they don't do anything for us. The implication in Asa's life is that if he had, it wasn't that he shouldn't go to the physicians, but he didn't consult God at all. And the implication is, is that if he would have consulted God, that he wouldn't have died when he died. And so we have to learn. We have to grow up in the faith. You know, there are places in Scripture where Paul says to the churches that he's writing to, he says, I want, uh, it wasn't Paul, but hang on, another of the writers says to the people he's writing to, he says, I wanted to talk to you about something like this. I think it was Jude. He says, I want to talk to you about this, but instead i got to talk to you about this. Paul says, by this time, you should be eating the meat of spiritual living. Instead, you're just still drinking the milk like a baby. You haven't grown up. So we learned last week, we need to learn. We need to grow up in Christ because we will fall down. We will fail. He is forgiving and merciful. But sometimes we just need to be told to get up. So if we want to follow Jesus, I know there are people in this room that don't want to follow Jesus. And that's your choice. But if you want to follow Jesus, you need to get on it and do it. Don't waste your time. So today we're going to look at, uh, we actually have two titles, if you will. One is loyalty, or we could also call it the great search. And so, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about this uh, guy named Asa. And Asa, as a young man, um, he was a godly king. He was actually a godly king. We would call him a godly king the whole time of his reign, even though at the end of his life he didn't follow God as wholeheartedly as he did as a young man. So when Asa was a young man, 
there was this army that came. It was the Ethiopians. Another African group. They came from Ethiopia, and it was the Ethiopians and, and some other folks, and they brought a million-man army against Judah, against Jerusalem. And Asa had a large army, but this army that was coming against them was over twice the size. And Asa went before the Lord and said, Lord, it doesn't matter how big we are. Listen to this faith. He says it doesn't matter how big we are. You can still win. Even if we have no power, you can still win. This is a lesson we need to learn as people who follow God, that he is big enough to overcome anything we face. So he trusted in God, and God routed the enemy. In fact, the Bible says that he crushed this enemy army so much that they were never able to recover. Just crushed them. Later in life, he faced a smaller army. This time, when this army is coming against him, he goes to one of his neighbors and makes an alliance or a treaty with them so that they won't fight against him. Because And he doesn't go to God for the protection that he went to God when the army was so much bigger. What happened was, is because he didn't go to God first, God never wanted him to have a treaty with these people. God wanted to use Asa's army to destroy this people because of their wickedness. Instead, Asa made a treaty with them. Asa blew God's plan. When we don't go to God with everything, we find ourselves doing things in our own wisdom, in our own strength, and many times we can blow God's plan. So that brings us to our verse, and here's, here's the verse we're going to look at today. So the prophet comes to Asa when he's coming back from his battle, and they won. But that wasn't God's plan. God's plan was for them to destroy the, in, the army that he was now friends with. And the prophet says this to him. He says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. We'll just stop right there. So what the prophet is saying is that God is looking. God is searching throughout the earth for hearts that are loyal to him. And then when he finds those hearts that are loyal to him, he does great things for them. And so the prophet says to Asa, In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. God says, I wanted you to destroy those people, not be friends with them. I wanted you to be victorious over them, not be friends with them. Asa blew God's plan. So let's just talk about this for a few minutes. So kids, I, I have a question for you. So what is loyalty? What is loyalty? Anybody? What is loyalty? Think about it a minute. What is loyalty? Being there. Again? It's commitment. Consistent commitment. Anybody else? Take a shot at it. What's loyalty? You can have loyalty to a product. That's so true. In fact, in my Facebook post last night, I, I said that. You know, your phone company, the company that makes your car, they all have plans to enhance customer loyalty 
They buy your loyalty. We'll give you this deal if you'll stay with us, right? Adhering to? Adhering, that's an interesting word. So what does adhering mean? What? Stick to. Right, it's like glue. A glue will adhere two things together, right? And so loyalty is an adherence. It's a sticking to something, a commitment. So I looked in the dictionary about loyalty, and it was funny because when I looked at loyalty, it had almost nothing there. It referred me to another word, and you probably didn't think about this word, but it's the word fidelity. Loyalty. Fidelity. Fidelity means to trust. And so, kids, if I was loyal to you as a friend, as a pastor, that would mean I care for you. I pray for you. I do things to help you, even if you do bad. That your, your actions don't determine whether or not I love you. Jesus is loyal to us. He's not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. Even when we're not loyal to him. Loyal. Fidelity to trust. It's interesting, the next definition here is a firm adherence to a person or party with which one is united or to which one is bound. It's a sticking to something. In fact, then it goes on, it says, see faith. Faith. And I'm not going to read these two definitions to you, but I am going to go to the end of this and just read this, that faith is that firm belief of God's testimony and what God says. That's what he's saying. It's a firm belief in what God says and of the truth of the gospel. Okay? So we believe what God says. And here's the trick. It influences our will. We believe what God says so much that it changes the way we think. It influences, it influences the will and leads us to an entire reliance on Christ. And so what it does, our belief in what God says makes us trust in Him. And that goes all the way back to loyalty because it leads us in that loyalty. You know, our, in our English translations of the Bible, it not all of them use the word loyalty. Some of them say completely His. God is looking for someone that is completely His. God is looking for someone, another version says, with a perfect heart. Another one says, with a blameless heart. Another one says, wholly devoted. God is looking for someone with a faithful heart. God is looking for someone who has given themselves completely to Him. God is looking for someone belonging completely to Him, wholly devoted, whose heart is true to Him. This is what God is looking for. As we ended the service last week, we saw Jesus say in the book of Revelation, He says, I wish you were hot or cold. I wish you were completely loyal. I wish you hated me. But since you're in the middle, just kind of, you make me sick. 
That's exactly what he says. He says, you make me sick, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Because I want you hot. Or I want you cold. In Exodus 20, verse 3. Oh, what did I do here? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is the definition that we had, that the firm belief of God's testimony and of the truth of the gospel, which influences the will and leads to an entire reliance on Christ for salvation. Sorry, I missed that. So Exodus 20, verse 3 says, You must not have any other God but me. No other God. No other God. Because, you see, God is searching for loyal hearts. Hearts that are not just saying, Well, I believe God, I don't worship these idols. I don't, you know, I don't worship Buddha or I don't, worship these other of the 2,000 Hindu gods. I, I just worship God. God is my God. But he's wanting a loyal heart, one that will do whatever, whenever, he says. Jesus said this to the woman at the well. He said, but the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. That's what God's looking for. Those of you who don't want to follow Jesus, when your heart says, I'm going to follow Jesus, that's when you follow Jesus. I don't want you to pretend. I don't want anybody to say some prayer that they don't mean. Jesus wants hearts that are loyal. Jesus wants hearts that say, I'll serve him. When I gave my heart to Jesus in my late teens, my word to him was, I'll follow you if nobody else will. All my life. Jesus says the Father's looking for people like that. In Ezekiel chapter 22, this is God speaking. He says, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. In other words, he's saying, you can't see it, but there's a wall of righteousness. When righteousness and goodness is in a land, it protects the nation. And Israel had fallen away from God, and God says, I look for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I search for someone to stand in the gap of the wall so I wouldn't have to destroy the land, but I found no one. God was looking for a way to save the land. I needed someone. I looked, couldn't find one loyal heart. I looked, I looked. In Isaiah chapter 6, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? Incidentally, us, God is speaking us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay? God, I, one God, us. Three parts, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? Then Isaiah said, here I am. Send me. That's what God's asking for. He's looking. He's saying, who am I going to take? Who's going to be loyal to me? And God is looking for us to say, here I am. Send me. God is searching for hearts that are loyal, no matter what. No matter what. Psalm 53, 2 says this, God looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. (coughs) 
Sorry, got some allergies messing with me. Again, we go back to Asa's story. And the contemporary English version says this, The Lord is constantly watching everyone, and he gives strength to those who faithfully obey him. But you have done a foolish thing, and your kingdom will never be at peace again. That brings us to this point that it isn't easy to follow Jesus. I want to tell you this. You need to be careful, okay? Many of us have heard that when we begin to follow Jesus, that everything gets better. Everything, all these things will happen. All this goodness will happen. And there is truth to that. But Jesus does not say that. And if you're believing a gospel that says that we're not going to have any problems and we're just going to grow in prosperity and everything's going to be great, that's from hell. I want to tell you that. That is not what the Bible teaches. In fact, listen to what Jesus says in John chapter 16. He says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. So Jesus is giving us a heads up. He says, you can have peace in me. You can rest in me. You can trust in me. But here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. It's going to be tough. But take heart, because I've overcome the world. We're going to get through this, he says. In John 15, he also says this, Do you remember what I told you? A slave is not greater than the master. Who's the master? Who's the master? Jesus. Who's the slave? Us, followers of Jesus. He says, the slave is not greater than the master. Since they persecuted me, naturally, they will persecute you. Woohoo! They didn't like Jesus. They won't like us. The ungodly. And if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. You remember Jesus on Palm Sunday riding in. We were talking about this yesterday. Jesus on Palm Sunday riding into Jerusalem. Everyone around him is having a party. Hosanna. Here's our new king. Here's our new king. And Jesus is weeping over the city. He says, I've tried to gather you like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you wouldn't. If they don't listen to Jesus, they're not going to listen to us. You know, that kind of stuff isn't something everybody wants to sign up for. But when Jesus says, come follow me, some of us just have to go. So we come down to this, that following Jesus, it's really all or none. How can you be kind of loyal? You know, there's a term even in English language, it's it's called divided loyalties. Well, that's an oxymoron, that can't be. Loyalty means it's not divided. You can't have divided loyalties. In fact, Jesus says this. Look at this. Jesus says, no one can serve two masters. You can't have two loyalties. It doesn't work. For you'll hate one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. This is what Jesus is saying. You got to be all in. You live for yourself. 
most of the time and things don't go right and you wonder what God, why God isn't doing what you need? Guess what? Exodus 20, verse 5 says, You must not bow down to them. These are other gods. You must not bow down to them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I could have titled this, Me, Me, Me. God says it's all about me. I want all of you. I'm not going to share you with someone else. Another one from Exodus 34 says, You must worship no other gods, for the Lord, whose very name is Jealous, is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. He says, I love you. You are mine. And no one's going to have you but me. You know, I'm that way with my wife. I don't share her with anybody. Do you get that? I don't share her. She's off the market. Right? When we begin to follow Jesus, he says, you're off the market. I'm not sharing you with anyone. And that's the theme of the whole Old Testament. God talks about the children of Israel, the Israelites, how they adulterated themselves. He views them, he views the church as his bride. And he says, I don't share you with anyone. And his bride is represented by those who have loyal hearts. God is is looking for loyal, undivided hearts. So you have to ask this question. If God's on this great search, what's He going to find when He looks your way? When God looks your way, is He going to find what He's looking for? We're going to take communion together. You know, it's interesting. Jesus, in his mission here on earth, he was all in. Jesus said, I'm giving it all. I'm giving it all to you. Because my relationship with you is the most important thing. I'll take just a minute until I hear the crinkly, crinkly stop. There is an extra penny on the floor. It must go in the boys. <laughs> You know, one reason that God is looking for loyal and, and undivided hearts is because that's the way his heart is. Paul tells us in Romans that God demonstrates his love to us. He shows us how great his love is and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And if that resonates in your heart, that stirs in your heart. It's the confirmation that we have relationship with God or it's God's call for you to follow. And so Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, Paul tells us, 
Isn't it funny that God, who is looking for loyal hearts, created this thing we do called communion with a room full of guys that had divided hearts. Guys that wanted to follow Jesus, but were really afraid to follow Jesus. Yet Jesus said to them, he says, I love you and I don't want you to forget. He knew, God knew that he had given them everything they need. That all the tools that they would need to live a godly life were coming. And even though they were imperfect, he was going to take them through. And that's the message for us today. God's given us all we need for life and godliness. And he helps us with this, to remember. To remember that even though we fail, even though life is difficult, even though we have trouble, that he's given us what we need, and we need to find those tools and use them. We need to grow up in the faith. So the Lord took the bread, and after they had eaten, he said, I want you to take this, eat it, and remember that this is my body that is broken for you. This represents, this reminds you of my body which was broken for you. And then when you take the cup, you're going to remember that this reminds you of my blood that I shed for you. It reminds you of my blood. So, Father, we bring these before you. Lord, these aren't magic things, but they're important things to remind us, O oh God, of your great love for us, and your great sacrifice for us. Lord, as we eat this and drink this, help, us, help it to remind us of what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, Father. Amen. Let's eat together. We're going to sing one last song before we close today. And it's really a song of commitment. It's a song that says, Lord, I want you to take my life. It uses a word in there, it's called consecrate. And the word consecrate just means to set apart says, God, I want my heart to be loyal. I want my heart to call out to you. I want my heart. Hey, guys, we can throw that stuff away later. Just go ahead. Yep. Thanks. So the song's really saying, God, I want my life set apart. I don't want my life used for anything else but you. I want to be like that special goblet or pair of goblets that we have up in the cupboard that we only use for special things. I want you to take my life.
take my life, take my life, let it be consecrated, consecrated. That's the cry of our heart this morning. Lord, that our lives would be loyal. That, Lord, as you look for us, as you look for loyal hearts, that you would see us and find what you're looking for. Hearts, O oh Lord, that are dedicated to you, consecrated, set apart only for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So let's just take a second here. We're going to. We're going to let Leighton go out and crank up the fire and make food. So, so any questions this morning? Any questions? <laughs>